Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I am going to run the new version of my LSA through a standard set of checks. This allows me to weed out annoying bugs before I invest more time in refining the model. Ok, first I want to tell you a little bit about math objects. Let me turn on the vectors group. Then let's go to the objects tab and scroll to the wing geometry group of math objects or variables as I also call them. Look, here's the math object CRW which is the wing's root chord length. When I click on it, it highlights the root chord in the workspace. This is because it contains a formula that refers to this vector. The same thing holds for the wingtip chord object. It too has a formula that refers to this vector. However, the wingspan does not highlight any geometry in the workspace. Let's double click on the object to inspect. Here you see the formula 2 times YTW refers to another math object, YTW. It is right here. And it refers to this point, the leading edge wingtip point. So wingspan can be calculated as 2 times the Y value of the wingtip point. That's pretty straightforward and it shows how you can edit math objects at will and as you will see shortly, you can add your own. One math object that we will be using shortly is XCW, which is the X position of the quarter chord point of the mean geometry chord. It is approximately here. OK, let's take a look at the math objects associated with the horizontal tail. You can see there is some discrepancy here. While the horizontal tail area is correct, the taper ratio is supposed to be 0.6, not 0.4. Clicking on it shows the two vectors that were selected in part 2 of the video series no longer correctly represent the chords. Also, the tail arm is supposed to be 13.2 feet. It is not that at all. You must be aware of that when you create your model, you have to reconcile any discrepancies of this sort. We can't expect surfaces to know what you're trying to do, which surfaces belong to the wing or horizontal, and which do not. That is your responsibility. And here we have an issue. We must fix these discrepancies so these numbers reflect the correct geometry of the model. First, let's fix the formula for the mean geometric chord of the horizontal tail. Let's overwrite the current formula with the proper formula. CHT is equal to 2 thirds times CRHT times 1 plus TRHT plus TRHT squared, parenthesis closed, divided by 1 plus TRHT. You should know that the variable CRHT is the root chord of the horizontal, and it does not exist. Yet. That's why we get this error when I pressed OK. Let's add this variable. Click on CHT and then right click to open a pop-up menu. Select insert new object. It creates a new variable and places it above CHT. Type HT root chord. Enter CRHT as a symbol. For formula we are going to select the two vectors that now represent the root chord. Let's zoom in for a better access to the model. Click on the advanced button to expand the form. Locate the VL function, VL for vector length. Double click to transfer it to the formula box. Note the cursor is blinking between the parentheses. This is an anticipation for the ID of the vector of interest. Press pick vector ID button to select. Enter plus after the last bracket. Press the insert function button to get another instance of the VL function. Press pick vector ID again and now pick the other vector. Press the simple button to reduce the form. Change feet square unit to feet. Press OK. Now you see that CHT has a value, although it's incorrect because we still have to correct the taper ratio. Let's add another math object for the tip chord of the horizontal. Let's call it CTHT and proceed as we did before. Then let's fix the taper ratio, TRHT. It is tip chord by root chord. Press OK. Now we see that both the horizontal's mean geometry chord, CHT, and the taper ratio have been corrected. 
To fix the tail arm takes a little bit of thinking. Recall the x value of the quarter chord of the wing's mean geometric chord is stored in the variable xcw. We have to locate the x value of the quarter chord point of the horizontal's mean geometric point as well. Do this by adding a new variable, yCHT. It is the spanwise position of the mean geometric chord of the horizontal tail. Then let's fix the XCHT, which corresponds to the XCW variable on the wing. The proper formula is the X value of the apex point plus YCT times D tangent of the leading edge sweep of the horizontal G underscore C4HT plus 0 0.25 times the horizontal's mean geometric chord. D tan means the angular argument is in degrees. Then the tail arm is equal to the difference between XCHT and XCW. You can see this still gives the incorrect tail arm. We are expecting about 13.2 feet. This is because our leading edge angle is incorrectly defined. We must fix it as the inverse tangent of the difference in X value of the two leading edge points divided by the Y value of the outer one since the inner one is already zero. Press OK. There you have it. Now we see the correct arm. To better show what we just did, let's go to the XY plane and show the two points we've been working with, XCW and XCHT. There they are, shown as point 1 and 2. Now let's place a horizontal dimension line between them. Select Insert and then Dimension Line. The offset specifies how far from the first point the dimension line will be placed. Here, 10 feet. Let's also create vertical dimension lines for the wingspan and horizontal tail span, as well as for the vertical tail. We'll just show those. Alrighty then. Now let's look at the aerodynamic properties of this new version. First, let's briefly discuss reference values. Surfaces uses these values when calculating coefficients and stability derivatives. Remember the wing area is supposed to be 140 square feet, wingspan 31.3 feet and aspect ratio 7. This assumed the wing was in the XY plane. What happened after that was that I introduced a dihedral of 5 degrees. This reduced the span slightly, so since the wing area refers to the projection of this wing onto the XY plane, it was reduced as well. Therefore, the aspect ratio is also slightly different. But remember, it was just a starting point. These values are close enough and the difference doesn't bother me one bit. I understand its cause. If this configuration works out, I will consider this airplane having a 138.1 square foot wing area and aspect ratio of 6.91. If this bothers you, there is nothing stopping you from redefining everything such that you get a wingspan of 31.3 feet and a wing area of 140 square feet. But I suggest you do it after watching this series so you can check if your numbers match mine. The first check is the maximum lift coefficient of the current configuration. Refer to part 3 of the video series for the procedure. To save time, I have already done this and found that the maximum lift coefficient is 1.414 and occurs at alpha equals 13.6 degrees. You may recall the first version achieved a maximum CL of 1.38 at 15.5 degrees angle of attack. Of course, the explanation for the drop in stall angle of attack is that the higher aspect ratio of this wing has a steeper lift curve slope. Thus, it reaches its maximum lift coefficient at a lower angle of attack. Let's calculate the basic stalling speed with the elevator in its zero deflection position. It differs from the control stalling speed which accounts for the elevator deflection required to maintain that high angle of attack. This changes the flow field like you will see shortly. Now let's use the built-in calculator to estimate the new stalling speed. The new stalling speed has dropped from 59.5 to 44.7 kcas. 
that is very promising. This also begs the question, is there a way to improve the stalling speed further without the use of high lift devices? The answer is yes, by using airfoils with a higher maximum lift coefficient. An example of an airfoil with a higher maximum lift coefficient than the ones used here is NACA 2412. It is probably best known for being a standard issue airfoil in many Cessna aircraft, for instance the 172. According to NACA R824, the airfoil's CL max is close to 1.6, I would say about 1.58, at a Reynolds number of 3.1 million. Let's do this. Select and double click the tip airfoil. Open the Canva Creator and type 2412. Press Create. Press OK. Right click to open the pop-up menu and select Copy Object Properties. Then select all the other airfoils and right click and paste Object Properties. I have estimated the airfoil's maximum lift coefficient as a function of Reynolds number using the experimental data. It turns out that the airfoil at the fuselage junction and the midspan station should be 1.57 and 1.56 at the tip. Let's change the reference values for each surface. Left outboard wing. Right outboard wing. Left inboard. Right inboard. Left fuselage. And finally right fuselage. Alrighty, let's determine the maximum lift coefficient of the second version with the new NACA 2412 airfoils. Let's open the VLM console, go to the controllers tab and click reset to ensure the elevator is at zero degree or neutral deflection. Again, since you already know how to do this by now, and in interest of time, I have already completed this and found the maximum lift coefficient to be 1.602 at alpha stall of 17.4 degrees. Now we find the basic stalling speed is 42 kcas. So, this begs at least two questions. First, why is alpha stall 17.4 degrees now, but was 13.6 degrees with the previous airfoils? Second, how is it possible that the three-dimensional CL max is greater than the two-dimensional CL max for the airfoil? Let's answer the first question first. Why is alpha stall 17.4 degrees now, but was 13.6 degrees with the previous airfoils? That is because the NACA 2412 airfoils have one half the camber of the 4412 and 4415 airfoils. This shifts the curve to the right, as you can see here, and brings the stall angle of attack to a higher value. It is exactly what happens when we deflect a flap. Deflection down moves the curve left and up. Deflection up moves the curve right and down. Then let's answer the second question. How is it possible that the three-dimensional lift coefficient is greater than the two-dimensional CL max for the airfoil? Well, the explanation is that the three-dimensional CL max is that of the entire aircraft. Here, it includes the lift from the horizontal tail, so the lift constitutes that generated by the wing and the horizontal tail. At high angle of attack, like here, the horizontal tail itself is perhaps at some 10 degrees angle of attack. It is generating lift upward, just like the wing. You may recall a few minutes ago I called this type of stall basic stall versus controlled stall. A basic stall is what one sees when one stalls an airplane in a wind tunnel. One will set the elevator deflection, say neutral, and run the aircraft through what is called an alpha sweep. So the same elevator deflection is noted for the complete sweep. This contrasts a controlled stall, which is what takes place in real flight. The pilot will have to deflect the elevator substantially, trailing edge up, to drive the aircraft into the stall. This drastically reduces the horizontal lift, making the force point in the downward direction, and drives down the lift coefficient. This is why it is not enough to only estimate the basic stall capability. There is no guarantee the airplane will actually be able to stall at the desired speed. For us, 45 knots. If at all, when flying, it is our responsibility to design the airplane such it will be able to stall at the lowest speed possible. If the airplane is found not to be able to stall during flight testing, it will mush down at an airspeed higher than the stalling speed. 
As far as the FAA is concerned, this becomes the aircraft's minimum airspeed. It means that all emergency related regulations must assume that airspeed, making them harder to comply with. Additionally, we have to contend with increased takeoff and landing distances and many other performance related setbacks. Okay, uh, the changes we have made are very promising. These took a little longer to deliver than intended because of the surfaces training I had to get in. I have several more checks to do, including determining the neutral point, trim for stall and cruise, and, and a check of the dynamic stability characteristics. I'll wrap these up in the next video. As usual, please consider giving this video a thumbs up rating on YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you can be notified of future videos that give various design tips to aspiring aircraft designers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.